In this video, we're going to see how to combine data from multiple Excel workbooks that are located in a single folder and create a single file that would contain or combine all this data in the different Excel workbooks. So here, for example, we have some sales data from September, October, or November 2023, and we want to combine this data into a single Excel workbook. We're going to see how to do that using Power Query. Also, we have a CSV file here, which we're going to avoid when building the automation in Power Query so that we only get the data from the Excel files. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys. So here is how the data looks like. This is the file that contains the data for September. As you can see here, we've got the order date, product category, product name, customer name, order quantity, unit price, ship date, region, and payment type. And you can see here that we have this data in a worksheet called data. And this is the case with the data for the other months as well. So the data for October will just have the order dates in October and the data for November will have the order dates in November and still in a worksheet called data. So this is very important that you would have the worksheet having the same name across all the files here, the worksheet containing your data, and also that you would have the column names having the same spelling and the same casing. So order date should be written like this and it should be the same across all files. So it can't have a space, for example, like this in one of the files. This would make the automation or the process in Power Query not work. All right, so this is how the data looks here. And now I've opened a blank Excel file and I've named it all data and saved it to a folder on my desktop. So in order to import the data from different files in a folder, what we need to do is to go to the data tab on the ribbon, click on get data from file and then from folder. And then I will need to supply the link for the folder containing my files. This is gonna be the link for the folder and I'm gonna click on open. And as you can see here, I get the list of the files that are contained in the folder. I'm gonna click on transform data because I need to do more transformations to these files. And then as you can see here, I have a table containing some information about my files. So I have the first column here, the content column, that says binary and binary simply means just a file. You can see here I've got some information about the files down there, their names and their sizes as well in bytes. You can see also that I have a name column here that contains the name of the file and part of the files in the folder is that I have a CSV file. So I would like to avoid importing this CSV file. So what I can do is that I can filter this column, the name column by the file name containing .xlsx, which is the extension for an Excel file or an Excel workbook. So I'm gonna click here on the filter, go to text filters and then contains, and I'm going to choose to filter by the file name containing .xlsx and click OK. So as you can see here, I managed to filter for only the Excel files. Now, in order to start the merging or the combining process, I'm going to click on this button here that says combine files. And as you can see here, I'm prompted with another window here. So since the data in all the files is contained in a sheet called data, I need to select that. And as I told you, all the files need to be contained in a worksheet having the same name in this case it's called data and you can see also that we have here the sample file it's taken the first file to be the sample file the first file in the list of files which is sales for november you can also make the sample file any of the other files but in this case the file for november is okay and i'm gonna click okay here so now as you can see here i have the power query editor window here and I have here a sample of the files. You can see here the sample has the data for November and then here I will have all the data stacked on top of each other. So as you can see, I have the data for November and then a grand total for the data for November and then I have the data for October and then a grand total for the data for October and also the data for September with its grand total as well. So the first column here that I'll be removing is this source.name column because I don't need this column here that contains the name of the file. I don't need that. So I'm just going to right click here and remove this source.name column. And then 
here on the order date you can see here that we have a grand total row here which we can filter off so i'm going to click here and i'm going to filter off my grand total row here so that it gets filtered off all the data so it's going to be filtered off the data for november october and for september as well and what is remaining is to make sure that the data types for the columns are correct so here the order date should be a date data type since it's a date so i'm going to click on it here and switch to a date data type and for the other columns here the unit price should be a currency so i'm going to select a currency data type the ship date is a date so that's okay so now we are ready to load our data here so we can load it to a table for example so i'm going to click here and click on close and load to and i'm going to load it to an excel table in a new worksheet and as you can see here i managed to load all my data here to an excel table i have the data for november for october and for september i can also start creating a pivot table as well from this table so i'm going to select any cell here and go to insert pivot table from table slash range and i'm going to create it a new worksheet and as you can see here i managed to create a pivot table so i can put for example the product category here in the rows area and the region in the columns area and let's put also the order quantity in the summation of values area so as you can see here i'm able to analyze my data all right so what happens if we add another file to our folder let's say we add the data for december so here is our folder here and we're going to add the data for december here which is going to have the same format so i've copied and pasted the data here for december as you can see here and it has the same format and it, it, the data has the same column names with the same casing and the same spelling and also it is contained within a worksheet that is named data as well so it has the same format it's just the data for december so now you will see that if we right click and refresh here the query for the data you'll see here that we managed to load the data for december without any problems there is also something I need to add about the data for December, which is that the data for December has a different order for the columns. So as you can see here, the product category column is not the second column as is the case with the other files. It's actually the eighth column here in column H, but it has the same spelling as we mentioned before. So that is all what matters. So the order of the columns does not matter but the most important thing is the spelling and the casing and also that they are all contained in a worksheet with the same name all right guys so what if the column names are different and the sheet names are different as well uh, can we make something dynamic so that the query does not break well it's actually possible we would need to intervene using some M code. So if you would like me to create another video about that, let me know down below in the comments section. All right, guys, so this concludes our video today. So if you found the video helpful, please make sure to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And please make sure to follow us on social media. You'll find the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.